The arguments against gay marriage are plentiful, but they're all fallacious, if not flat-out incorrect. I'd like to tackle each one and point out where the problems lie in each argument. There are many of them, and I'd like to give each one its due time, so I'll likely make several videos in which I'll tackle a small number of them at a time. I'd like to start with the so-called argument that marriage should be between one man and one woman. This one is interesting for two reasons, the first one being that it isn't even an argument, but simply a restating of one's position. To say marriage should be between one man and one woman is to say that gay relationships shouldn't be recognized as marriage. It's a way of saying a negative by using positive language. Straight marriage should, instead of gay marriage, shouldn't. It's basically a way for an anti-gay opinion to masquerade as being pro-family. But there's another thing it says that it's against, and this is the second point that I wanted to mention. The saying used to be between a man and a woman. By changing a to one, they're also stating that polygamous marriages shouldn't be legal, implying that somehow gay marriage would lead to polygamy, when actually there's nothing about gay marriage that challenges monogamous marriages. This is a variation of the slippery slope argument that I'll get into in another video. This argument begs the question, why? Why should marriage be between only a man and a woman? Why shouldn't it be between two people who love each other dearly? Another one that people often use is the idea that marriage is an institution that shouldn't be changed. Sometimes they'll combine this argument with others by using the word sacred and or the one man one woman line, as in marriage is a sacred institution between one man and one woman. By using the word sacred, they're attempting to draw parallels between marriage and religion, which isn't valid in a secular nation, especially in the US, where the First Amendment grants us freedom of religion but I'll get into that a little later. The crux of this argument is that marriage is a static ritual that can never change. However, marriage has in fact changed in the past. Marriage is a very dynamic institution that is much different today than it was when it first began. Marriage started off as a union between one man and as many women as he could afford to buy from their fathers. Sometimes the women were willing, sometimes not, but that didn't matter, and neither did age. The only thing that mattered in the deal was if the husband was getting his money's worth and the father was getting a fair price. Since then, it had changed to be an arranged matter decided by the bride and groom's parents before it eventually became a union between two people in love. Even until just recently, marriage was only legal between a man and a woman of the same race. It's clear that marriage can and does in fact change to suit the changing moral zeitgeist. Some people make the argument that gay marriage shouldn't be legal because it would allow gays to adopt, and having same-sex parents is not the ideal environment for a child to be raised. This argument is very relevant in the wake of the 2008 presidential election, in which several states passed laws that would prohibit people from adopting who were not married. Despite the fact that these laws would keep kids from getting into single straight parent families, these laws put a severe hindrance on gay adoption. So it is clear that many people feel that this is the case. However, statistics seem to say otherwise. Aside from a small minority of studies in which data was either misrepresented or sometimes even fabricated, scientific studies show that children who were raised by gay parents grow up to be adults that are just as mentally healthy as children who grew up in a similar situation with straight parents. The real issue here isn't whether or not gays are good parents, but rather the fact that many people get the yuck factor from the idea of gay people being around children. Many straight people find gay people disgusting and don't want children to be near them for any reason. The truth of the matter is that most gay people are plenty mature, nurturing, and intelligent to raise perfectly happy, healthy kids, and they have the added benefit of having no chance of accidental pregnancies. Many people who oppose gay marriage will use the idea that their religion is protected by the First Amendment to promote an anti-gay message. They use statements such as homosexuality is immoral and marriage is a sacred union to promote their anti-gay message. Their thinking is that Christianity is protected by the First Amendment and the most popular religion in the U.S. and therefore its tenets should be respected when making law. However, the First Amendment doesn't work that way. The actual text in question goes as follows. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The important part in this case is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Laws are not made in the U.S. on the basis of Christianity or any other religion alone. 
A law in the U.S. must have a secular purpose in order to be considered to be put into effect. Otherwise, Congress would be respecting an establishment of religion. Some would argue that the second part of this statement, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, grants that laws can be made on the basis of religion as long as the majority of the population shares the opinion that the law should take effect. However, this is also not the case. While we do choose many of our laws by using the voting process, there are safeguards in place in our government to prevent the majority from oppressing the minority. The majority should never be in a position to pick and choose the civil rights of the minority. Most arguments against gay marriage and homosexuality in general usually come down to procreation. The opponents of gay marriage proclaim that the main purpose of marriage is to procreate, to continue your family line. Anyone who makes this statement is either lying or confused. Marriage, as it is in our society today, is about love and nothing else. If this were not the case, infertile couples, couples past reproductive age, and couples who simply choose not to have children would not be allowed to marry and contraception would be illegal unless you could prove you were using it to time pregnancy rather than control it. If marriage were only about procreation, we're obviously making an exception for those couples mentioned. Why not gay people? Sometimes this argument comes in the form of homosexuality is unnatural. Despite the fact that homosexuality is not unnatural, as it has been observed in nearly every animal species science has studied, even if it were unnatural, this argument would be invalid. There are many things that we enjoy that have nothing to do with nature, and some, in fact, that are bad for nature, although we're trying to fix that. If we were to outlaw everything that were unnatural, we'd be left naked in a field with no tools or weapons fending for ourselves. These are just a few of the arguments that gay marriage opponents use, but not to worry, I'll be back again with more to debunk.